Welcome to the Dub C and CJ Mack show. Once again, my name is CJ Mack. And I'm Dub C, a.k.a. Skip Skip. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. So, Dub, man, how are you enjoying Vegas? It's been a few days here now. I mean, and- I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, then been out, you know, hitting, swinging and banging around the town and everything. Then got a chance to, you know, find some good ooey. Right, 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 right. Got some good so, Yeah, so we're going to get into that in a little bit, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, once again, I'm enjoying the city, man. Uh, straight? Beautiful place, man. Good? It's a beautiful place. I love it out here, good man. Good food? Yeah, yeah, good food, good everything, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm playing golf, man. I'm, you know, I'm doing some Tiger Hoods. I'm doing my Tiger Hoods tiger, thing. Yeah. You know, I might still be slicing the ball a little bit, but I'm going to correct that. I'm going to get out there with them chucks. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 I can't wait, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get up chucks. in the morning and we're gonna get you out there I'm with gonna the show you, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you mm-hmm. the real golf Yeah, we're gonna see like. how them ankles is, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. yeah. So, so today, today I wanna do something uh, special uh, and dear to me, man, as a gentleman, man, it's like a little brother to me, you know, yeah. he's a grown ass man, I still yeah. call him my little brother, yeah. right, uh, I'm really impressed with him, uh, his drive, um, his determination, and his knowledge, he's one of the smartest, smartest gentlemen I know. And um, I'm really impressed with him because he wanted to do things his own way. And uh, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to bring him on. His name is Kareem Webb. What's up, Kareem? Kareem. What's up, little bro? What up, Mac? Duh. What up? What up? Good, man. I'm uh, honored to have you here today, man, because you're so knowledgeable, man. I call you about so many different things, and you give me, like, a deep perspective. See, you, you you're not a service surface guy, you know. I'm a, I got all these. Me, I'm a creative, so I got all these million dollar ideals and stuff, and not break them down to you. And you say, yeah, 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 yeah. But you got to think about what the cost is gonna be, and what's this gonna be, and how much is gonna bottom this line. Gonna be? You know what I mean? Line. You don't care about none of that creative bottom stuff, line. man. Does it you know? make sense? But I, I does uh, it make sense? You know, so yeah. just to say a little bit more about you, man. He was. Uh, Fresh out of college. Okay. You know, when we met. And I can't even remember how we met, but when we met, and then he I found out that uh his his parents, his family owned a bunch of McDonald's, like maybe about like sixteen McDonald's. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh but he didn't want he told me he didn't want to I said, Man, what are you doing? What are you doing over here with me, man? And he was over here yeah. working with me and sleeping in the damn office with me half the time and we we building up something, yeah. you know. And he was like, Man, I don't want to smell like French fries. What? And I'm thinking, but if you don't French fry your ass back over there. Yeah, man. They own <laughs> but, but, he was like, but he was like, I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. So he would conduct business meetings in the office, and he got all these people coming through with money. And we hood, man. We ain't really know what to do, but we just watching them go. We like, okay. And the biggest thing, I remember one of the things you told me, you said, Buffalo Wild Wings is only in Ohio. Uh-huh. And they want to move west. We got to get involved. There's only eight sauces. There's only he had it all broke down, right? Did his and we was like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. gonna go buy bins. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And, and now he has four of those. Woo! That's what I'm talking you know? about right so there. Yeah. Come, on now. Come on for now. Come on having a vision nah, and always sticking to it. You know. Well, I appreciate the acknowledgement, bro. But you know, there's there's two ends to the story. You know. I did McDonald's a long time, man, and 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 you know the the thing that I learned the most about McDonald's two things. My old man always said McDonald's was the best he, thing he could do, not the best thing I could do. Mm, mm. So that was, that, that was one lesson, even in terms of my own kids. Love but that. Then, but the other thing is, man, growing up working in that environment, you knew I knew. Look, I wanted to date the girls that worked in the drive-thru. I played ball with the homies that, you know, yeah. my dad yeah. was, was not like yeah. a, a seven in the morning, you watching cartoons on a Saturday type of dad. He right. was, you get, I mean, my dad is, you know, yeah. 39th of Dinker, you know, Boxes South LA really cat, right? right? So yeah, right. He, he, he was like, no, you all get your ass up and go to work. Go to work. Saturday, Sunday, summers, anytime you weren't playing ball or, or, or in school, you was working. Mm. And so the people that I work with didn't have the same 
um, resources that mm. I had growing up, but I knew that God loved them the same and they're the same people. So when I met you, it was like, this is a brother that tells the truth. He says what he means. He means what he says. He's respected as much as I've seen anybody else be respected. Oh. And so I want to I want to get down. Let that man finish. Let that finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz so, you know cuz you on the show, man. So <laughs> so so I want to get down. You know, I want to learn from you and and um and 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 try to f figure out ways to add value and you know, and that has parlayed itself into a 25 year plus friendship, exactly. man. Yeah, so exactly. It's a go. blessing to be here and 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 to reconnect with Doug. Yeah. Yes, sir. Beautiful, yes, man. Sir. Definitely, man. So in a, in in um Besides the restauranting and, and things of that nature, man, you're also the airport commissioner for Los Angeles? Yeah, man. I think, well, first of all, you know, <laughs> pros and cons of being an African-American, um, really just in this country generally, um, and in business, like in everything else, you do have to work harder. You do. It is it is harder. You are, you know, running uphill, carrying a 100-pound sack, trying to compete in the same race as everybody else. Um, but when you begin to start to have some success, you are, um, unique. And I think that uniqueness lent itself to, to kind of standing out. And so, yeah, a couple years ago, the mayor called me and said, Hey man, would you consider being an airport commissioner? And the, the, the reason why I did it is because they're spending $20 billion hmm. and African Americans get less than 1% of that revenue in terms of the businesses that we own and the revenue that's coming from it. And the, 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 the contractors and all that construction that's happening to change right. the airport. So I have a fiduciary responsibility to know about the security and everything else. And I vote on everything, mm. but I got a keen eye to making cer certain that everybody that is a citizen of Southern California or at LA um, and, and, and folks from all communities get to participate in that public platform. $20 billion is a lot of money to be spending to redo that airport wow. and yeah. who's getting the bread. I right. got my eye on who is getting the bread and yes, is it sir. fair? Yeah. Right. Cause yeah, we, cause we're just driving by it <laughs> and eventually yeah. we'll be able to use it, but that's a lot of money being spent. A lot spent. of money. And a lot of things, you know, a lot of pockets are getting lined and yeah. it's not necessarily yeah, us. Yeah. 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 So yeah. your job is to make sure that more of us are included because you understand yeah. where it if is. If you got, if you're a contractor, man, and you, you want to do business at the airport, my job is to make sure the airport is trying to find a way to help you do that. If you are a concessionaire and you want to be a concessionaire at the airport, my job is to try to help make certain that the airport is creating programs and pathways to allow you to compete to be successful in that space. So I don't care if you're an architect, if you got a consultant business, if you, whatever it is that you do, you got a business and you're in the, within the city of LA, we want, um, you know, to, to attract you to look at all the opportunities that are there and compete they for those opportunities. They want to give you opportunities. Yeah. Quit saying that you do not have a way out. There's always a way out. But first you got to have the will, the drive, and you got to want it. What would be the first step? someone wanting to get into, you know, what you got to get in the contract. Offer. DM me. The stuff is here. Like, it's hit me directly. Be the first I, I want to save that later for the show, yeah. the, the contact, but right now while we're talking about it, where can we where can we get at you at on DM you? Where can on we on IG, you? at Kareem Webb. I mean, I'm going to screenshot it and I'm going to send it to, they got a whole department at, at yeah. the airport whose job it is, is to identify talent and, you know, if somebody needs some help figuring something out, how do you get certified as a, disadvantaged business enterprise or et cetera, et cetera. There are people on payroll at the airport that that's their job. Come and on, so man. I'm, well, I'm, I'm on, literally that's like, deep. that's the information is king. That's man. Deep. You know, sometimes we miss out on so many things because we just don't have the information. Well, yeah, a lot right? of times we're scared. A lot of, a lot yeah. of us are scared of failure. A lot or, of us or the process of or the process. You, you know, know, I like to tell some of my, uh, my kids, man, that came under me that's, uh, NFL players. And I mean, they got millions of dollars, man. It's like, you got to be willing to do a little bit more than what's easy and what's on the surface, right? It's easy to go buy that gold chain. Everybody goes to get the gold chain first. You got to get the gold chain. Got to get the hook up with the jeweler and go yeah. get that. Then you go get the car. Because right. that just takes a little bit more effort mm -hmm. and a couple lies, and you can walk off the car lot with a car. Right. Now you start talking about real estate. It's a little bit more tricky because now yeah. you got to show these taxes. Now you got to do this. You got to. Right. And so let me give up and I'll just go buy another car. Yeah. See? And so now you get trapped right there because you, you're afraid to go to the next level and uh, apply yourself just to get a little bit more information. So things in these programs, they're reachable. They're obtainable. You just have to do the research 
and then do your business correctly and you can you can you know potentially land these type of contracts yeah. and work on yourself you know i mean the thing that we don't talk about enough i know like this is we're supposed to have levity here so we try to figure out a way to like <laughs> like make it not so deep right. but right. the reality is man when you come from 400 years of institutional unfairness there are things that are ingrained in us that say that that make us want to believe that we're not really worthy of the things that mm. we see and want. Come on now. And so, you know, there's there's it's not always our fault initially that we're not putting the best foot forward, but we got to be able to see that and address that. That's you why know? that's why you're here on the Dub C and yeah. CJ Max yeah. show right yeah. here, you know, so we can let you guys know that you can do it. There is some hope. Yeah. There's still some hope. And it ain't the, the bread. And, and, and it's not. It's see, not the bread. See? Like bread chases good ideas. See. Right. See? And you guys are like the perfect example. And, and, and what you guys have spawned culturally is right. the perfect example of value because how much money has been made off of those assets. Yes. And, and, and the idea, the asset yes. is really the ideas yes. and the entertainment right. and all of that yes. kind of stuff. But how much money people have made off of that culturally is valuable. And we come from a people that people are attracted to the things that we stamp. Yes. And so, yeah, like we have the talent and people will pay money for the idea. So it's just about have the idea, believe in your idea, be an outstanding person, put yourself out there and watch God work. But most yeah. importantly, yeah. the business. Yeah. Got to handle the business Got to handle the business. Got to handle the business side. Yeah. Yeah. Kareem like has uh, hooked me up with a few people in different conversations, man. Mm -hmm. And I've been I've been amazed, man. And you know, and me being older, and I've been around a while, but still, I haven't been exposed to some of these things. Like you know, I might say I got an idea, and he'll say I got somebody for you. <laughs> you right, I mean? right, and right. I'm in this amazing right, conversation right. with someone. Like okay, and then like you said, it makes me say, get me together, get me, get myself prepared to be able to accept this challenge of going higher and doing better things, yeah. right? Yeah. Can I tell you the best question to always ask in business? What's that? Is what must be true? So I believe in you, like, you you begin with the end in mind. So I'm always, Mac, I'm always talking about reverse engineering what you want to have. So if you right. got a vision about what a business is or what it's going to look like, what the lifestyle is going to look like, how much money you're going to make, then what must be true to make that happen? Mm. Mm. And then go do what must be true. Wow. And then like that, what, what must be true might be 10, 20 steps. But each one of those steps has a what must be true to get that done. I love it. Right? And I then if it. you could That's just key. figure out what must be true, then you can just work on that rather than being focused on the destination because that's intimidating and daunting and it's way over there and how am I going to get there? But if you could say what must be true and focus, how many people do I have to talk to to journey. learn focus on the journey. about what's got to be true, then I could just start getting the milestones done. There we go. And eventually you're going to be there. Right? So yeah, let's take a little yeah. uh, break right now to pay some bills, and I got to write some of this shit down. He just said. <laughs> <laughs> so what must be true oh, right now man. is we got to take a break with so many we'll sponsors. Call him Kare Kareem Learjet. He <laughs> over my head, man. <laughs> you watching the Dub C and CJ Max show. We'll be right yes, back. Yes, sir. What's up? Bro, you, you on your phone? Oh, we filming? We're doing a commercial, bro. We got people out here who want to subscribe. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Hey, hold on. Let me get it right. What's happening with y'all? This is Dub C. And I'm CJ Mack from the Dub C and CJ Mack Show. And once again, we'd like to thank everybody out there for the continuous support. Yes, indeed. And we also like to remind you to tune in and subscribe, 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 subscribe to YouTube.com slash Dub C and CJ Mack Show. Or just hit the button. What a button at? Click, 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 click. Hit the click, button. Click. click. And hit the button. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching the Dub C and CJ Mack show, and I'm still CJ Mack. <laughs> and I'm still Dub C. <laughs> you know what? It was something that you said earlier on, uh, on the segment that I wanted to go back and um, touch on was you said that you you wasn't a kid that was sitting home that was watching cartoons Saturday morning. You wanted to be that kid, but your father was like, nah, and they hadn't. And it's crazy because as much as we could sit back and we could say, well, that wasn't cool, you know, let them be a kid. And a lot of times we as parents, we want to show more, you know, show, show, give a little more wiggle room to the, give, give the kids more wiggle room than we had coming up and don't be a stern on them. But what's crazy is I commend your father for that, for the simple fact that just like you said, what must be, what, what, what must be, what must be true, what must be true must was be true. in order mm -hmm. for you to watch cartoons, you got to have electricity, you got to have a roof over yeah. your head and you got to get up got to yeah. go to work so i love that but at the same time too something we we're talking about in the break was 
you said that was cool, but I know that I wanted to create a, um, an environment or create some time to where if I wanted to sit back and watch the game, do this, do that or whatever, you know, I had to do something, create a, a different situation or where I can still make money, but do this. Why don't you talk about that right there on what, yeah, made, I mean, you, like what, the, what, what made you, you know, the fact of the matter is like, I, I started working at McDonald's at nine years old. I went to Morehouse College. I worked at. I, mean, I was wearing polyester uniforms off the campus, going to go work at other mm. franchisees' Sacrifice. stores. So, like, I, mm. I worked at McDonald's. Sacrifice. I was Put that in my late twenties, right? And so, because the foundation was laid, the foundation was yeah. laid, the skill set was laid, all the conversations in the car, the ones he was having with me, and the ones I was listening to him having with other people <laughs> yeah, that right. I enjoyed. Right. Right. right? It go. wasn't about the lectures. It was right. about you don't you learn it when you don't even know that you learn it. Right. And uh, but like you, you know. Like we talking about, but with, with the basketball game, and yeah. But, but 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 at the same time, you would have never come and hung out with me at at, at, at McDonald's, right? Right. And right. neither were the other kinds of folks that I wanted to hang out with, right? You understand? Right. So it was like when I saw Buffalo Wild Wings. Actually, I came to Vegas because I had Buffalo Wild Wings here, and I saw it, and I went in the kitchen, and I was like, "This ain't court on blue. This ain't." You know what I mean? Right. Like five star chef. Right. Get down. I could do this. Right. There you go. Right. There's alcohol. This is a fun environment. If I'm gonna spend 60, 70 hours a week busting my ass to create something, let me let me do something that's consistent with what I would want to do anyway. Right. What you that, would want to do. Yeah. Right. And there's no day that goes by that I don't have a homie call me like, "What store are you gonna be at?" Right. None yeah. of them. Yeah. Bring right. your checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> you there know, you go, pay, man. but that's but it's I'm all good. About. But you know yeah. what I mean, like. And I've had so much fun with people I care about. And I don't Buffalo call you for free Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, you do. No, no, no I don't. No. I don't. I'm, I'm tempted some days. <laughs> you told me at McDonald's. Like, I could at least get a, some coupons. <laughs> but I don't I do not do that, no, because I want to patronize his business. Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? No. But I do that's go dope. in there and flex my muscle a little bit. Like somebody said something to me one day up in the of Chris Shaw, right? I said, hey, man, my little brother on this joint, man. What is you talking about, man? And uh, he'd be pretty... Interested in here? Now you were around here playing around, yeah. and it was like, oh, 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 sir. <laughs> like, yeah, check yourself. No oh, man, <laughs> this dude right here had nothing to do with me. This dude right here, CJ Mac just showed up as Mac. He showed up, check yourself, man. Right? Yeah, showed up as Mac. Yeah, come on, man. So, so yeah, that's interesting too, man. So you chose uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, and like I said, you brought that to me, man. When they were only in Ohio, you was like, hey, we need to do this. We need to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and we had the money. We had different plans. And then we didn't have the money. Right, right, <laughs> you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. But he did. He stuck with it. And, and, and you didn't. I was so proud of you when, because uh, I didn't see you for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back around and saw you had that, man, I was like, man, look at that, man. That's so amazing, man. But you know what, though? It's never too late. It's never too late. If you want that wild wings, you can get that buffalo yeah, yeah, wild yeah, wings. Yeah, 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 you know or what I mean? it's just anything else you see that, I mean, so many people that don't pass up on opportunities, business ventures. I mean, we see it all the time, you yeah. know, or with us, with our, ourselves. We sit up and be like, just like you're talking about buffalo wild wings, some people had an opportunity to, opportunity to invest in other businesses. Right. And they sit back and watch them like, oh, this shit blew up. Yeah. Damn, I wish I would have, you know, I mean, we hear all the stuff about Bitcoin and, all kinds of different mm -hmm. things going on. People are like, man, I had, I remember when and uh and you know, but it's never too late though. That's why, you know, I like seeing walking testaments. Mm -hmm. I don't like hearing about it, seeing it on TV, and you know, and I mean that's cool, but it's 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 nothing like seeing somebody that look like you, right? That come from the same place you came from, exactly. And it don't have to be. The, I mean, in in every in every story, it don't have to be the same color. Yeah. It's just somebody who. Shared the same struggle. That's yeah. how I respect that more than anything. Man. You know, struggle. more than anything. You know, and, and to me, that right there, brother. yeah, to me, that's something, man. That I, I mean, man. So let's that, go to a I fun topic. It. Yeah, because I just realized that we just named those two companies too much, and we don't have a check from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> right. So let's get to some uh, universal. Yeah, yeah. How did you end up in the cannabis game? Man, it's funny, man, how, like, philanthropy and all the work we were doing um, with, like, Opportunity Youth would end up getting us into cannabis. But really, you know, it was a city councilman called me and started talking about social equity, which is, like, really set aside licenses for people who come from South L.A., um, you know, who experience the most arrests and the most, uh, 
you know, interaction with the police around cannabis in a way that was disproportionate to everybody else. And so um, I was approached and asked kind of based upon the franchise experience and what I was known to be and how I got down in community owning the Buffalo Wild Wings, man, would I get involved in that? So we stood up this company, man, and we trained, ended up training 120 people for two years. And the 21 that did the best in the, in the program are opening up dispensaries. We just opened uh, the first one about six weeks ago on La Cienega in L.A. The second mm. one will open in, um, on Melrose. Mm. Uh, they're called 64 and Hope. It's right over here. Yeah. There we go. So check us out. And, uh, we and it's dope. We'll have the largest footprint of cannabis retail all owned by people from South L.A. Um, Come on now. And we'll, 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 we'll compete at the highest level of the game. Mm, 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 so mm. there's a lot, of, a, lot of people don't, a lot of people think, well, you get some money and you can just open up you know, a dispensary. It's, uh, you, once again, you got to learn the business. Yeah, so it's, it's licensing, it's access to capital. It must it's be true, right? Yeah, yeah, it's supply chain. It's you competing, you know, and it's right. not just, you know, sometimes we think um, as black people or as minorities, right? Right. Let's open up a business and we think about our own world where, like, okay, our customer is going to be us. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you were in Vegas, African Americans are what, less than 10% of the population for sure. If you in LA, we're 9% of the population now. I believe in just opening businesses that are owned by us, but that 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 cater to everybody. Right. Yeah. right. Right. And so, you know, you, therefore you got to compete like everybody else. Our right. expectations has got to be like, okay, well, who's better? What is it, MedMan? What is it? What, who is the brand and who is best in class? We're going to be better than them. There we're going to go. execute better than them. It's going to look better than them. The customer experience is going to be better than them. And then the profitability is going to be better than them right. too. Right. Right. So we're going to win on all levels because we deserve to win. Yeah. There you go. Now, now I'm an X Street hustler. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> well, you, well, well, I mean, you, it's true. I mean, it's true. What must just, be true? I mean, <laughs> it's true. It was just funny how you put <laughs> your how you, how you said that with your white voice. Yeah. <laughs> what well, must be true? Right. That, that was, was funny to me. So, there was an emphasis on the X, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm yeah. Used to, <laughs> used to, right? Yeah. So I used to laugh at people that sold weed. I thought that was just like a joke. Right. Because you got to save your money selling weed, bro. Chooks on you, Jack. Other things, the other things, you know, was that fast money. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Piles of it. You know, weed was kind of like man, slow we, money to you. We, yeah. What are you gonna do? You know, right. you smoke one joint. Right. There goes your re up. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it amazes me how marijuana has blown up, man. It's yeah. just like amazing to me, and it's also amazing to me that I'm not in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All these. Cars I'd have ran from and yeah, you know, yeah, and I yeah, in it like yeah, that, that's yeah. I don't even understand that. But uh, so we got to talk because I got to be in this some kind of way, you know. Hey, you know, I already be getting that too. Hey, but anyway, hey. but yeah, man. But it is amazing to me, man, how this industry is so big, man. How huge it is, man. And that you know, man, I got a friend that just did fourteen years on an eighteen cent year sentence for marijuana. And I think that's rather unfair that it's legal now. Mm -hmm. And this man just did 14 years of, in his, of his life for running a marijuana operation. You know what I'm saying? And he and I are talk, in talks of doing some things, and he's someone I want you to speak with as mm -hmm. well because uh, he's out now, and he's doing his thing, man. And, you know, he, you know he's, he's on the straight and narrow, but, I mean, his knowledge is obviously he's someone that can run a multi-million dollar business yeah. <laughs> in the marijuana industry, right? right? right. So uh, I just think that's rather unfair. And there's still people in jail right now for sentences mm -hmm. for marijuana. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But everybody's out here making, it's the industry, now. everybody's getting money. I did a song in 1995 called Let My yeah. People Out the Pen. Yeah. And I said that one day they could just, just say, hey, cocaine's legal. Right. And start making money off of it, and it's on every other corner now, blah, blah. But you, and it happened, and it came true. But with marijuana. But you got to understand with any uh, any so-called taboo in the eyes of, you know, of the, of the gatekeepers, it was the same thing with alcohol. You know, I mean, back in the days, you know, with the moonshine and stuff like that and everything, they don't want, they don't, they don't want nothing to be sold if they couldn't make couldn't money off it. of it. They could tax it. It's so the same thing with marijuana right now. Yet. So it's the same thing that's going on with marijuana Amazing. right now. I mean, it's... It ain't cool, but it is what it is, you know. And all we can do right now is, you know, utilize our platform to speak on it. But at the same time, too, let's jump in and let's enlighten some people right. that's out here right now that want to, you know, that want to get into it or don't know how to get into it or don't know what it's about. Because a lot of people still 
they still think, you know, they hear about it being legalized in certain places. Some people think, like we was talking earlier, some people think that it's, it's legal everywhere. You could just go out and just smoke a joint, mm -hmm. do what you do, and buy a joint anywhere. Mm -hmm. click, 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 no. Click, click. Nah, nah, you're going to jail. <laughs> going to jail. Certain places. Click, click, it ain't. Click, click, click. Yeah, you can't set up dispensary certain places. Nah, yeah, exactly. Louisiana, yeah, so. Texas. Yeah. You know, there's some there's some real consequences that, that very small amounts on, on the possession side so, today. So if I yeah. got caught smoking a joint in Louisiana, the wrong place. You are going to jail, yeah, sir. You, you could have a problem. A real, wow. Yeah. yeah, you are going to jail, wow. sir. You know what I mean? Or if you, well, I don't know all the laws that so I don't want to speak on what I don't know, but if you get on a plane, yeah. they might not sweat you at LAX. Uh. You land in Shreveport. <laughs> no matter where you are, man, at the Federal Aviation, the airport, the city of LA don't run security at the airport. Nah. Right. Right. That's the right. Fed. So they might not care. Cannabis but is not federally legal. Yeah, it is. And so when you're trying to take your edibles through the airport or you're trying to take, you know, your pre rolls or I whatever. I know my rights. Yeah. Well, you know, but, an officer in Santa Monica told me, he said, I forgot what the conversation was, so I'm not going to put him on blast. But he said, you know, we don't check for marijuana anymore. I was like, what is this, a setup? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he straight said that to me at Santa Monica Well, Airport. he's in California, so the law is in California. Yeah. Nobody, no judge is going to send you to jail for possession, and it's not illegal to possess right, in right, California. Right, 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 right. right. So, so that's the tricky thing. Yeah, there's not... Checking for but that. the feds would be like, yeah, 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 let's go. Now, uh, California like don't have nothing to do with us. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. So so I want to ask y'all, has anybody here had any weird experiences while smoking weed? Yeah, for sure. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, <laughs> no, listen, man, man, I don't need to talk about that, man. I well, I mean, my, I'll talk about mine. I don't care. I'm going to have my head out the window a couple of times, <laughs> like <laughs> blow it out the frame and like, yeah, nah, yeah. Like, being too high ain't fun. It no, ain't fun. not at all. No, it ain't you know, fun, man. And there's, there's a, well, you tell your story first. Then we talk about the education, the terpenes okay. and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so my, my, mine happened a long time ago. Yeah. So I had a homeboy rest in peace named Keita. Yeah. And uh, we were riding down the street, man. This is when, uh, before all this new stuff, it was just called the Chronic. <laughs> <laughs> right? So we was riding down the street. I'll never forget, man, we were in a, um, we were in a uh, Maxima. We was in a little square, the little square maximum. Mm -hmm. Music bumping, boom. We playing JJ Fad, right? <laughs> Supersonic. Doom, 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 doom. And I'm smoking. And I'm always been a half ass smoker. Like, you got a joint? Yeah, I hit it. Right. I never bought a bag of weed in my life, but I hit it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. So I'm smoking weed. He give me a joint. I got a joint. We going back to back. This is he's a real weed smoker. I'm not. So I'm hitting the weed. All of a sudden, man, my heart felt like it was beating to the song. <laughs> I said, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm trying to compose myself, so I had some glasses, right? So I grabbed the glasses, I tried to put them on my face. The glass said, came down. I said, oh, shit. And I turned my head. I was like, oh, my God. That was at it, right? You tripping. So, so I grabbed on me. I said, hey, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. He's like, man, what's the matter with you, man? I said, man, I'm, man, I'm, something's wrong, man. My heart beating fast. He was like, I was like, take me to the hospital. He said, man, I can't take you to the hospital, cuz. <laughs> I said, what? I said, just take me by my mama's house, man. He took me by my mother's house. I said, I don't want to go in. I just want to see it. Went by my mother's house. Nothing doing. So then he said, did you eat today? He said, man, you smoke the same thing I smoke. I said, man, I don't know. So he said, did you eat? I said, I don't know. So we went to the jungle. We went over by the jungle. So when they had Golden Bird in the jungle, mm. he opened up the door. Door opened up like a thousand times. I went and sat down. He gave me a drumstick, bought me some chicken, right? I grabbed a chicken, man. I ate the drumstick. The shit was crawling down my throat, man. <laughs> and I snatched the, snatched the drumstick out of my mouth. I never bit it. <laughs> At that point, I said, if I die, I just die. I said, I mean, take me around the corner of my cousin's house. I went to my cousin's house. I laid down, and the matches just just start swallowing me, bro. And I just said, man, forget it. I don't care if I die, I die. And I went to sleep and was over. I ain't touching another that, that joint for three that years. California, that California bud ain't no joke. Boy, yeah. I, ain't touch, I didn't touch no weed for that three years, That California years, bud ain't no joke. Yeah, that's a classic weed story. Yeah, man. that's a yeah. classic. Yeah. I don't no, no, follow no. that one. Yeah. Every now and then, you I'm telling you. You can't like, follow that one, can you? No. No, no, I no if that. I hit it, if I hit something, in, 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 it's, it's been a couple times where I hit weed since then, and I get that feeling, and I yeah. say, oh, shit, and I go run to some milk. Yeah. Quick. <laughs> like, I don't want this. Like you yeah. hit the stick. Yeah, I didn't smoke weed with Snoop a couple times, man. Just because yeah. you can't say no to Snoop, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Snoop say, hey, cuz, you want to eat the joint, cuz? I'm like, 
Yeah. Run it good. Ain't that shit? And it's like amazing. It's totally different than what you would ever experience in your life. <laughs> You know that, I, get, I get that feeling off, run to his kitchen. I'm gonna go get some of that milk, man. So that's my. <laughs> so what's the education on it? In the education now is man, like it's not just either you go into the dispensary. You can really get educated about terpenes. You can get educated about milligrams and dosage, and and it's like anything else. Your body builds up a tolerance. So like you said, you don't smoke often. Or Dub right. say you know he's not a. You know, he's I'm not, occasional. He's occasional. I'm occasional. He's not a wake and bake. Yeah, I ain't no wake and bake all day, all night. Yeah, yeah, your your tolerance is not the same as Snoop. Oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you know that. Yeah. And so you yeah. might be the two hitter quitter and you're cool. And then see right. what happens. And then there's different strains and different terpenes. You know what I learned? Because I get paranoid if I smoke too much <laughs> weed, right? And yeah. it, that don't feel good. It's like everything that could go wrong in life, <laughs> that's where my focus is. I'm like, this ain't fun. Why am I doing this to myself? Right. But then there's like um, some strains I, that have like uh, pineapple terpenes and yeah. banana and this, that, and the other. Oh, okay, that makes me super productive. There you go. But I hit two or three hits and go. I set it down. So like I don't do too much. So you have to yeah, like learn how to use the plant in a way learn that's your consistent weed, man. with your body. Learn your so weed. On, so. Hey, I don't know nothing about weed, man. So the sativa and sativa the- Sativa and the indica. Okay, so the sativa is up. It keeps you up. It's yeah. like a stimulant. Yeah. And and the indicas that bomb shit. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, on the couch. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. yeah. Some of that. Yeah. Oh, we. That's too much for me, man. Oh, man, but you know what me, though? Man. I mean, even you know some of the most mild mild weed in this Cali, that Cali weed, man. It's no joke. Oh no, it's fire. It's, it's fire, fire out there. You know? It's fire everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's fire. Yeah, everywhere. I'm talking yeah. about buddy Trick Trick. Uh, trick, out there, trick, trick Trick Trick. Oh. What up? What up, Trick Trick? Trick Trick is saying Detroit weed go pound for pound with uh, California weed. Now, well, they, now, they all got the California now, strain and they're they growing done, indoor because he didn't got in the business. Yeah, yeah. now yeah. he didn't got in the business. You know, I mean, yeah. but uh, before him, when nobody messed with that. Nah, nobody. Nah, and I still think this is still the mecca. Like you know, you got you want your info. You want to learn. You know, most most of my partners when they get off the plane, that's the first thing. And get yeah, some like, of that Cali. Yeah, yeah, they want some of that Cali. Yeah. Hey, man, you know, every place, everywhere you go, you know, you're going to want some when you get off the plane, but they want that Cali. Yeah, it's it's OG, which stands that, for, you know, different than what we thought OG stands yeah, for yeah. around weed. It stands for ocean grown. Come on right? now. So it's Cali California on weed that OG. I didn't know Come on, that. Drop a juice, man. Let's yeah. go. I didn't know that. Come on, ocean what? Ocean grown. I didn't That's know California that. California weed. Yeah. California weed. Did you know that? You heard it first on the Dub Scene CJ Max show. I know that. I, I know that. Ocean grown. Ocean grown. Yeah. Ocean grown. Which but, means it was grown close to the ocean. Yeah. I would take California. Uh, yeah, uh, power. California. Yeah. Uh, that. See, I Humble didn't know that. County. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. Ocean grown. Ah oh, man, a, I took some of my uh, of dub up, man. some of my partners out to uh, a uh, golf tournament. Man, it was uh, Big Percy's uh, golf beef. Mm -hmm. And they had weed at every hole, man. <laughs> uh, man, man. So what, what, what I had my like the rules was you had to smoke the weed? No, no, it was just oh. there and it was available for you. So they was indulging and plus, you know, drinking and all that, right? Man, my brother's like a close to an expert golfer. Right. He, <laughs> He, he put the so he, so he 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 he, he, he participated. Yeah yeah man hey man he put his club down. He said, "Damn man, it's two balls. I can't hit this." <laughs> <laughs> we was dying laughing, man. We had so much fun though, man. We was dying laughing, man. But I enjoyed it. But look, we gonna pay a couple more bills, man. And come right back, man. Once again, <sighs> you tune in to the Dub CCJ Bank Show. We got Kareem yeah. Webb here teaching us all kind of business and game, and you know I'm, I'm I'm being unselfish by sharing him with the world right now. So That's we'll be right. right back, bro. You you on your phone? Are we filming? We doing a commercial, bro. We got people out here who want to subscribe. Oh, my bad. Hey, hold on. Let me get it right. What's happening with y'all? This is Dub C. And I'm CJ Mack from the Dub C and CJ Mack Show. And once again, we'd like to thank everybody out there for the continuous support. Yes, indeed. And we also like to remind you to tune in and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to YouTube.com slash Dub C and CJ Mack Show. Or just hit the button. What a button at? Click, 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 click. Hit the click, button. Click. click. And hit the button. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. Welcome back, y'all. Once again, you tuned into the Dub C and CJ Mack show. And once again, I'm Dub C. And I'm still CJ Mack. Still CJ Mack. <laughs> and we are blessed to be here with uh, real, real knowledge, yep. real knowledgeable, and a walking testament, the homie Kareem. Kareem, once again, why don't you tell us about your company, before we get out of here, because we are about to wrap up, but I want you to tell us about your company and exactly 
what you offer, and where can we reach you at? Once again, the name of your company. Well, 64 and Hope is the name of the dispensary. That's where a lot of the focus is right now is mm-hmm. on, this, on this whole social equity movement in the cannabis space and growing that, that, that footprint. So if you're in L.A., come by 64 and Hope, 2000 South La Cienega. We'll be open on Melrose. You'll see us all over the city. You come in town. It's the straight shot from the airport to Hollywood, Beverly Hills. Come, come right there. Check it out. And then with respect to the business, man, or any ideas or things that people want to do, man, hit me up anytime. I'm at Kareem Webb. I'm on all the platforms, Kareem Instagram, Webb. Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Kareem yeah. Webb. You know, I appreciate you for coming through. Appreciate you for sharing the knowledge. Appreciate you for being down with the homie CJ. Appreciate you for just, you know, just staying strong, you know, and, and staying down and not just saying, well, you know, this is the way I got to go because – this is the foundation that was laid that my father said, you know, this is how it should be done. No, the work ethic was something that you you took in and you learned that. But at the same time, too, you said, I'm about to use my mind, man, and, and go my own direction and create, not just create opportunity for yourself, but avenues for other up and coming minorities, you know, particularly to come out and, you know, and to, to grow. And to me, we don't get a lot of that. We don't get that. We don't get a lot of that. And I just want to commend you on that. I'd like to give you your flowers while you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you thank you, you know, mm-hmm. and we here, man. Thank you. I want to thank you as well, man, for coming out here to Las Vegas. Come hang with your big bro. That's right. Tonight we're going to go do some bowling or something like that. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to spank y'all. Smoking. And, uh, and smoking smoking even, tonight, right? Nah, I ain't smoking. I ain't smoking. <laughs> smoking. Yeah. smoking. He looked at me like, dude, nah, like, nah, what? Nah, he nah. going to help me right here. Nah. Yeah. Hey, 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 but look, man, no, I appreciate like, the right? platform and what you guys are doing, man. You guys are so well respected, man. And your audience, I know it's growing and it's going to be like incredible, the platform that you guys are on. So it's an honor to be here and share a good word, you know. You know, it really does take all of us, right? In order yeah. for us to improve our take outcomes, we got to be intentional about it. You guys are. That's why you have me here, man. So God bless yeah. y'all. Thank you, man. Thank God you. bless thank you as you, well. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Dub C and CJ Mack show. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, we just want to do some good. You know, we could have any entertainer or this, and that, and this, and that here that we want. You know, it's not about that for us. For us, it's about helping, uh, spreading the good word in the community. Uh, and just being the best uh, we can be as men and helping to help other men grow and women in our community. So thank you very much. Get your motherfucking paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we out. All right. <laughs>